really, we're kind of wrapping up, prove it, and um, I called it no doubt, okay, no doubt. Um, have you ever asked, am I covered for that, you know, and so we all have insurance on different things, we're required to have insurance on our cars and, and uh, our homes and things like that, and we'll ask the question at times, am I, am I covered for that, am I, am I covered for that, something happens, something breaks, and then you call the insurance company with fear and trepidation, don't you? You call just wondering, is, 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 this, is this part of my insurance? Am I, am I, covered, am I covered for that? And, um, and so you're kind of waiting, like, well, you know, Mr. Casper, um, I need to get back with you on that. Okay? And then you're waiting for the phone call. Am, am I Am I covered uh, for that? And so different things happen to our homes, and, and remember hail on May 2nd last year, right? And s- some of us actually got new roofs out of that, you know? We were covered for that. That's crazy. Uh, that's a whole roof. That's like big, big, big bucks, right? Am I covered? And so we've got warranty coverage on everything nowadays. Have you noticed? You're going and you're buying things at the store, and they, they're like, I bought football gloves for Drew, uh, this week. Football gloves. You got that? Football gloves. And they want to know if I wanted the warranty protection on the football gloves. For only 6 or $7, you can have three-year protection or whatever it was, I can't remember, on football gloves. I mean, there, everything has a warranty package with it, but how many of us know that when we buy something like that, it doesn't always mean that you're covered? You know, you try to bring it in. I, I told a story about the bicycle where, where, you know, Drew was riding the bike and bent the rim, and, and I bring it in, and we had the coverage on that, you know, because they just swore up and down. Anything happens that it's covered, and you bring that in there, and they're like, oh, no, sorry, that's, that's not covered. I'm like, you mean I'm only covered if we don't use it? You know, is that how this works around here? So these questions of, am I covered, they do come up. But what about our lives? What about our lives? Are we covered? Have we been saved, truly saved by Jesus? Have we been truly saved by him? Are we covered? Are our lives covered? Are they covered in his blood and the sacrifice uh, that he made for us? And uh, that's what we're going to look at this morning. The big idea is we can know without a doubt we are forgiven and have eternal life. We are forgiven and have eternal life. We can know without a doubt that we are covered. How many of you have questioned, you've questioned that at one time or another in your life, you know, am I truly Am I, do I, am I truly going to make it to heaven? I mean, ha, let's be honest. Who here? You've had, I mean, you, and like sometimes when you've done something or whatever, you're like, if I steal the donut and I ask forgiveness right after I steal the donut, you know, will I still be okay? You know what I'm saying? Through the, you know, 11-year-old's mind, right? I mean, just things that you think about, you know, take the cookie or not take the cookie. Are we covered? Are we covered? So 1 John 5, 11 is where we are, and this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. If you see a fellow believer sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray, and God will give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death, and I'm not saying you should pray for those who commit it. We'll look at that in just a minute. All wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. For we know, or we know, that we are children of God, and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. 
and we can know the true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, and he is eternal life. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Lord, help us to understand your word today. Help us to be confident that we have eternal life, to be confident in our salvation in you, that you have saved us from sin. If we have said yes to you, yes, we're going to follow you. God, we are secure in you. God, as we talk about that this morning, Lord, help me as well to communicate your word effectively in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. What can we do to know we are saved or covered? The first thing is this, to trust in Jesus. This is going to be on the simple side, but there's going to be some deeper parts in it here this morning as well as we try to understand this a little more fully. Trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. To trust. You know, do you trust me? Have, have you ever played that do you trust me game? And you're like, what is that? Let's see. Um, just like we practice, practice this. Um, Emilio and, and Julio. Okay, I'm picking some big and strong guys. Come here for a second. Yeah, you come up on stage here with me. Emmanuel. What's that? Oh, <laughs> you didn't know I was talking about you. Okay, so the whole game, trust me. What's that? Yeah, so I, I picked two guys that I do trust. And, and two strong, big guys, okay? Very important. Very important for you. So, so we practiced this uh, yesterday, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so okay, so you guys are going to get on one side. So you guys go on, on one side, okay? And, and I'm just going to fall back, okay? You ready? I'm going to fall back. Yeah, I'm going to fall back to you, okay? Right. And you guys are going to catch me, sure. right? Because yeah. I trust you. Because I trust you, just like we practiced yesterday. Okay, yeah. All right, okay, I'm, I'm going to fall back because I trust these guys, okay? So I'm, I'm going to fall back. Wow, you guys are amazing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you for my cheesy illustration. Thank you for coming up here. <clears throat> that game, do you trust me? Now, now look, we've never done that before with them, okay? And... and I had to still, even though I was up in front of you, I still had to trust them. I had to put my trust in them that they're not going to let me crack my head open and us call the ambulance. Do you trust the Lord with your life? One of the hardest things to do is to give up control. I've had many people tell me, they're like, I just, I just can't trust Jesus because I just ha I have control issues. I can't, I can't give up control of my life. I can't give up control. But this is what the Lord is asking us to do. You know the whole Jesus take the wheel? Okay? He's asking us to trust him. To trust him full, fully. Because Jesus is everything. Jesus is life. Jesus is in control at all times. No matter what we're walking through, no matter how bad the circumstances are around us, the Lord is still in control. And the constant question that we have is, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do we trust the Lord? First John 5, 11 through 13, and this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life. He has given what? Us eternal life, right? He's given us eternal life, and this life is in who? It's in his son. It's in Jesus. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son or has, has God's son does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. So that you may what? Know. know. So that you can know you have eternal life. Without a shadow of a doubt, you can know that you have eternal life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, a verse that you should have slapped somewhere 
in your home. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. He'll show you which path to take. There's this trust, trusting in Jesus. I, Lord, I trust you with my life. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into me. I trust you. I trust you. You will lead me in this life. Very important. How do, can you know without a shadow of a doubt? It's because you, you can know because you trust the Lord. Cheesy illustration, maybe a little bit, but for all the control freaks in the room, okay, all the control freaks in the room, trust Jesus. Continually saying, God, I trust you. What a great thing to say. When you're walking through pain, you're walking through a horrible situation, to be able to say, Lord, I trust you. Use that this week. Because I know that if you're not in a mess, you're walking into one eventually, right? Because we're all breathing and say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. So how else can we know without a doubt? Stop practicing sin. Stop practicing sin. Um, I don't know what you make a habit of practicing. Um, I brush and floss religiously. Um, I guess the payoff for me is when I go to the dentist and they are like, oh, it looks so good. You know, and I'm, I'm just like, I've been working. I've been practicing on that just like my mom taught me, you know, on flossing. I don't know what you make a habit of practicing. Sometimes we are practicing the wrong things. Have you ever been doing that? And you've gotten really good at the wrong thing. I mean, they'll talk about people who practice golf and they have to completely learn something totally new because they've been practicing the wrong way all their life. And they've got to learn the new way to do it. And so they have to completely have a different mindset. And we can have a different mindset in Christ. He renews our mind. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. It's not up here, but Romans 12, right? Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be renewed by your mind. This way you'll know what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Sometimes we're practicing the wrong things. Sometimes we're asking the wrong question. How far can I go here, God, and still make it? You know what I mean? Like we're playing Twister or something. I don't know. Anyhow, how far can I go here, God? Is this okay here? Rather than saying, God, I trust you with my life, I'm turning away I'm turning away from sin and I'm turning to you, God, where we're making a conscious choice rather than playing this game that we sometimes play. I posted a video last night on Facebook, not that you're all following on me on Facebook. I was going to play it here, but it was too long. It's six minutes. It's old. It's Bob Newhart called Stop It, you know, too long. You'll, you'll have to check it out later. Sometimes we just need to stop it. We just need to stop it. 1 John 5, 17 and 18, all wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. I keep reading that. Why is that? Um, we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them, cannot touch them. Sometimes we practice the wrong things. Sometimes we get comfortable in our mess. Is this correct? If so, say yes. Sometimes we practice the wrong things, the wrong things. And this death that is being talked about in the scripture, you know, that lead to death, this spiritual death is what we're talking about here. Um, yes, there's some dumb things you know, the kids are, you know, sometimes talking to me about this app called Dumb Ways to Die and things like that, you know. I don't know if some of your parents may have seen this or whatever. But uh, yes, sin can cause death. But what we're talking about here, we're talking about spiritual death. 
okay, where we have done something to separate us from the love of God. And Scripture says that nothing can separate us from God's love. Even when we're in the mess, we can mess up on the fellowship. We can distance ourselves from God in terms of fellowship, but not necessarily um, lose our salvation over something that we have been doing. Okay, but it does talk about that there are things that we can do, or one thing at least that we can do, that can separate us uh, from God and cause uh, spiritual death. And so um, there are things that we, that we mess with in this life, and, and I can think of a lot of superficial things, okay, external things that, that we mess with at times. And we ask, can I still get to heaven and smoke? It's like, Pastor Andy, you're going here today? Oh my goodness. Yes, you can still go to heaven and smoke. You'll just get there faster. <laughs> what about drinking? What about things like this? And, and Scripture talks about drunkenness being a sin. It doesn't say that drinking itself is a sin. Okay, can I throw that out there? Can I, can I throw that out there? Sometimes we think all, all drinking is sin, and, and I'm not in necessarily that camp, but your pastor does not drink. And the reason being that your pastor does not participate in that, one thing is that God saved me out of that. He saved me completely out of that life. That life was death for me. And can I tell you that 95% of any marriage counseling that I do, if drinking was removed, I would not even have to counsel them. There's so many people that struggle with that. I mean, we could have a big church, guys, if we had an open bar on Sundays. <laughs> Couldn't we? Couldn't we have a, a massive church? Come party with South County. Woo! The worship's really good. We're living it up. But your pastor avoids that completely because I know way too many people that are struggling with that so intensely, it has a grip on their life that is just killing them every day that I steer completely away from that because I don't want to cause anybody else to stumble. And I can see the pain, I see the destruction that goes along with it. And so we steer completely away. But sometimes we dance with stuff. Sometimes we try to ride the fence. Sometimes we do some things. And actually, we have to ask ourselves through this process, are we really, is this really beneficial? Who am I hurting in this process? Who am I taking with me? Am I causing someone else to stumble here? Good things to think about. So there's things that we can participate in this life that don't necessarily ruin our salvation, but I don't know that they make us better. I don't think it draws us, draws us closer to the Lord uh, either. And so we ask all these questions, you know, well, if I only get drunk on Friday, is that okay? You know, um, these kind of things, you know, we all do this. And I, and I hope that me throwing these things out here today, that we can kind of just be a little real uh, with some of these things. What about window shopping? If I just look at her, okay. What if I just, what if I, what if I just look, Cindy? Is it okay, Cindy, if I just look at girls? If it's okay with you? She will kill me. <laughs> if I lust after another woman, Scripture says, it's like committing adultery. But sometimes we justify things, guys and girls, we justify, we're like, well, I'm just window shopping, I'm really not hurting anybody. And all the while, our heart gets farther away from God, our heart gets farther away from our spouse, and we wonder why, gosh, why does our relationship stink so bad? Why is there no intimacy? Why don't we ever have any fun when we hang out? Because we've given our heart and our affections to somebody else or multiple people. It hurts us. It hurts our family. It draws us away. Look, we all have issues. 
me included. And Psalm 103, 14 says, For he knows how weak we are. He remembers that we're only dust. This is so comforting when it comes to understanding this a little bit better. We came from dust. God knows that. He knows we're fragile. He knows that we do dumb things. It's part of this life, and that is so comforting that we can come to the Lord at any time and say, Lord, just forgive me. Forgive me for being stupid here. Forgive me for being prideful. Forgive me for being arrogant. Forgive me for being dishonest. And on and on and on it goes. And so the sin that leads to, to death or spiritual death um, really is looking at total desertion from the faith. Okay? Total desertion saying, Jesus, forget you. I am completely leaving you. And I've had a moment in my life when I did that. When I went into the army, I left all accountability and all the good things that my parents had taught me, and I remember specifically saying, I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to go do my own, my own thing, my own thing. And that's really what this is talking about in terms of uh, the sin that leads to death, blasphemy or apostasy where you're completely turning away um, from the faith altogether. But we've been given this grace, this grace, this unmerited favor. By grace we are saved. By grace we are saved. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. So we've got this amazing grace that we just, we sang about. It was so perfect, just like we planned it, Jason. Talking about the amazing grace of God. But because we've been given this grace, because we've been given this salvation as a free gift, does it mean that we should continue going on in life practicing sin? Should we do that? I've had people tell me, don't worry about it. Andy, don't worry about it. You just lived the life. You're going to make it to heaven. When Scripture tells us, should we keep on sinning? And the resounding answer is absolutely what? No. No. Romans 6, 1 and 2. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Sin will be a part, unfortunately, a part of our lives for the rest of our life here on earth. It'll be a part of it. There's certain realities that, uh, of this life that we have to understand, that temptation and sin aren't going away. I wish I could, you know, click the button with you or just turn it off uh, for you. But isn't it true that you were tempted yesterday in some area? Maybe the day before, you were, maybe last week, you, you were probably tempted because temptation and sin never, never quite go away. Satan has temporary, limited control in this world. Limited. And I love this word, temporary, don't you? Don't you? Temporary? He's in temporary custody. The prince of the power of the air. And so we read... Here in 1 John 5, 19, it says, We know that we are children of God and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. He is in temporary control and he grows around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, trying to cause havoc in your personal life, trying to cause disunity in your family, trying to deceive, get you to believe, believe lives and lies and false teaching and all sorts of things. This is what the enemy, the enemy does. So the bottom line is we should stop practicing sin. We should stop practicing sin. Why should we not practice sin? Why should we not practice sin? Here's a couple reasons. Some of you were ready to give me some. I felt it. I felt it. I knew you were about ready to. Uh, the first one is this. We were paid for by the precious blood of Christ. We were paid for by the precious 
blood of Christ. We were bought at a high price. 1 Corinthians six nineteen. you were not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. When you have paid a high price for something, what do you do? I mean, that, whatever that is that you bought that cost you blank, okay, if that thing was thousands of dollars, if, if you bought a new car, you're like parking that at the end of the lot, you're like double parking, you're like washing that on the weekends, I mean, you're taking special care of it, shining it up, that's what you do when you, when you have paid for something high. And here the Lord has paid for you. He purchased you. He purchased you by his precious blood. And so it should compel us to give everything to the Lord. So that's the first reason. The second thing is this, is there are consequences to our actions. There's consequences to our actions, our sin. We don't like to talk about it sometimes. Sometimes we like to ignore it. Sometimes we like to stick our head in the sand. We've all done that at times. We've seen others do it. Where it's like, la, 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 I'm going to be okay. This isn't going to affect me. I'm good here. I'm good here. And then we get deeper and deeper in debt. And then all of a sudden people start calling. Oh, they're not calling me. <laughs> they're not calling me. There's consequences to our actions. There's consequences to our sin. Hebrews 10, 26 says, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Pastor Andy, are you trying to scare us? <laughs> I'm just reading God's word. And this was written to believers. And there's something healthy about fear. There's something healthy when we fear God. Okay, when we respect the Lord and we respect his word and we trust him knowing that he has laid everything out for us in his word. He's laid out the best way or the best plans to live this, to live this life. So uh, if the fence is hot, we should probably stay away from it. I don't know if you remember this or not growing up, uh, but I do. There were electric fences in a lot of places. Okay, and so I'd go visit my grandma or whatever, and, and you know, you'd always be like, I, I wonder if it's on today, you know, as a kid, you know. And so you just always kind of, you know, I mean, it'd zap you. It'd, it'd, get, it'd get you good, but you, you, you just, I don't know. And that's what the enemy does, you know. He, he loves to, to kind of draw us in, and, and uh, sometimes we're like, ah. But here the Lord has, has shown us the best way to live, and he showed, showed us where the hot fences are to stay away from, and uh, we should heed his word and stop practicing sin. Amen? Um, how else? What's the last thing we'll talk about here? We're going to have the band come up. Um, how can you know without a doubt? We've talked about trusting the Lord. We've talked about to stop practice sinning. And we'll talk about this one, to surrender our heart. To surrender our heart. Surrendering our heart to the Lord every day. Um, who has your heart today? Does God have your heart? Who has all of your affection uh, today. 1 John 5, 21 says, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. The New International Version or NIV Version says, keep away from idols. Things that we worship other than the Lord. And there's always things that can draw our heart away from God. There's always things that can pull us Away, And we've got to be aware of that, and we've also got to be real about it, saying these are the things in my life that I know have been pitfalls. These are the things that you could even call maybe fatal flaws, you know, things in your, in your past that you recognize have been pitfalls for you that have drawn your affections, your heart away from God. And God is looking for your heart. 
He's looking for your heart where we are saying, Lord, I trust you with my life. Lord, I, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop practicing sinful ways, and I'm going to surrender my heart to you. You know, what, what do you want me to think today, God? What do you want me to do today, God? Where we're driven by this relationship with Jesus Christ, not by our own selfish desires that oftentimes get us in so much trouble. I can look back over my life and think of lots of things that got me in trouble. And most of them are this guy right in the mirror. Choices and things that, that I made. And here today, the Lord is asking us, will you surrender your heart uh, to me? Will you surrender your heart to me? It's, it just comes to a point where we're asking, we're just saying, Jesus, am I living for you in all that I do? Am I living for you in all that I do? Are we just adding Jesus to our lives, hoping he makes our lives better? Or does Jesus have all of us? Does he have all of our heart saying, God, I want to follow you with all that I am. I want to follow you with all that I am, God. The worship band's going to lead us in a song. If you'd stand with us. And we'll come back here and close in just a second. Let's just make this our prayer this morning. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Just sing it together. Here's my.
that to you this morning, you recognize you need to offer your heart to the Lord new and afresh this morning, would you just raise your hand where you're at? You need to offer your heart to the Lord new today. You recognize it. Maybe there's something that has been hindering your relationship with the Lord today and the Holy Spirit's revealed it to you. Um, that's awesome, okay? Something that he's brought to your mind today that you know you need to deal with. You know it's been distancing yourself, distancing you from God. You know it's not his plan today. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings things to our mind, things that hinder us from worshiping him, from giving all of ourselves to him today. And so with a simple worship song this morning, here's my heart, Lord, you can say, God, I follow you. I'm choosing to follow you. If that's you today, say, Jesus, I'm choosing to follow you today. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins today. Forgive me of my sins. Come in new, fresh into my life today. If that's you, pray that prayer. It's not my prayer this morning. It's your heart today saying, Jesus, I will follow you. Jesus, I will trust you. Jesus, I put aside those sinful things that you've brought up to my mind today that you've reminded me of that are hindering my relationship with you. Here's my heart. Here's my heart. As we start off this week with you, here's my heart today, God. I give myself to you. You just tell the Lord that. And there's a celebration that's happening in heaven today because you've just made that commitment. Can we give the Lord some praise today? You've just made that commitment to follow Jesus. You've renewed that relationship and he's restoring and he's healing your life. That's what he does. He's an amazing God. He's an amazing God. Please be seated for just a moment this morning. Um, the ushers are going to come forward this morning. We're going to receive our morning tithes and offering and uh, so grateful for what God is doing and we're actually a hundred days under 100 days with what we've called Reset, and uh, we are just going through every ministry, really, of the church, um, just looking at it, uh, re-looking at it, how can we do things differently. We've set this date of September 17th to really make a lot of different changes. We're hiring a, an associate uh, pastor as part of that. Please be in prayer for that. I mean, I know that's in your bulletin uh, as one of the prayer requests this week. Just keep, it, keep that in prayer. I've done some interviews and things, but we're still believing that God uh, has somebody in store there that um, we're looking for and just hasn't had the right fit, uh, the right fit yet. So thanks for keeping that in prayer. Um, but we're really, this is all about us courageously stepping into the next 10 years and making sure that we're maximizing the kingdom impact at South County Church. It's really about mobilizing people to reach people. That's what it's about. It's not about buildings. Buildings will be part of it. I believe that God does have a permanent facility for us in the future. This pipe and drape will be no more. If you believe it, say amen. <laughs> I know there's some of it, some of you specifically that really believe that. I'm really looking for that pipe and drape to go down. Um, but God does have things in store for us. But it's really about mobilizing people to reach people. That's what it'll always be about. No matter if we have a building or anything else, the vehicles, buildings, those are all niceties, as my father-in-law would say. It's about people. It'll always be about people, reaching people, that they would hear the message of truth. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to receive your offering this morning. Uh, God, I just pray that as people reach out in faith today, God, that you'll just bless them, show them that you're with them, and that uh, you reward obedience. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's so many great things happening. If you look in your bulletin there, um, you guys are probably sick of hearing about all the men's events, okay? If you're a lady in this place, you know, I, I've heard the rustling. I've heard it's like, Wait, why is all this stuff for guys? Where's the stuff for the ladies? It's been there, and there's even more in your bulletin today, so please take a look uh, at that and, and get signed up. 
uh, for those things that are happening. There's a great ladies' conference coming up on September 16th uh, as well, and they're going to buy tickets for those for that this week to get the early bird price of uh, 50 bucks. It's really so close. It's at Hilton Memorial Chapel uh, on September 16th, and so we don't want the ladies to miss out on that. There's a young adult picnic on June 30th, and uh, of course, there's the Ironman retreat, which we had 26 guys at 6 a.m. yesterday morning at the office for breakfast. That is huge. Guys, do you realize how big that is? Do you realize how big that is? And really, I told them yesterday, the reason we do it at 6 a.m. is so that we can kind of make it their secret life, okay, that they can get right back to their families. Uh, and it's like it never happened. Okay, so that's why we do it so, so early, um, really to not be an interruption uh, to the rest of the day and the weekend with your families. So that's why we do that. Well, listen, has been God, God been good? Yeah, has been good? Are you thankful for Jason being here? Thankful for this worship team today? Well, let's stand. Come on, let's stand up. God, you are good. Your mercies endure forever. We thank you for what you're going to do. We're looking forward to Father's Day next week, God. And we pray, Lord, that it will be a huge blessing to our dads. We're asking this in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Don't miss ice cream next week, you guys. There's going to be ice cream uh, for all the dads next week and all of you too. <laughs>